what's going on. The undercover boss is supposed to keep their cool so they don't blow their cover, but there are exceptions to every rule, and sometimes things get heated. If you haven't already, like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an upload. Let's get to it. Number 5. Shopper's World The CEO of Shopper's World, Sam Dushi, wasn't just a boss, he was a legacy. His father set up the store and he continued to run it when the time came. He was a man who believed in structure and having his stores operate a certain way, which is totally acceptable when you have a proven system you've helped build. But when he entered the discount apparel and merchandise store, he was blown away by just how bad things were. For example, after getting to know one of his co-workers, she showed him that the business practices that he personally set up and instructed weren't being followed. Ouch. In fact, they were operating more like a boutique and not a store. They basically just so threw no me training, on the register. No training, no manual, no studying for this job. No, not at all. <laughs> I'm shocked and disappointed. Disappointed mostly in myself for allowing this to happen. By his own words, the whole point of the store is self-service. That way people can get what they want and then go right to the register. But when that wasn't happening, you could see his anger rising. Then, things got worse when not one, but two robberies were happening in his store while he was there. Not only did the two shoplifters get away, he found out that it was a reoccurring thing and the employees were expected to be security. What's going on? Somebody stole something. Unfortunately, they were too late to get to the door. It's too late? It's too late. Well, where's security? <laughs> we're the security. To be clear, they weren't trained for that at all. This was proven by the assistant manager who revealed that one time she tried to stop a shoplifter and she got pepper sprayed as a result. So trying to stop these customers could literally put their lives at risk. So it's not surprising that they decided to not be security. You know, this woman, she's in the back piling her cart, $800 worth of stuff, and she has no intentions of buying anything. She's going out that back door. Eventually, she pepper sprays. It turns into this big thing. Apparently, one woman stole hundreds of dollars worth of clothes and shoplifting happened at least once or twice per day. It does happen. This is a serious problem that we do face here without security. How often does this happen? Um, this happens once or twice every day. That's not just shocking. That's something that should have been fixed ASAP. Furious over all of this, the CEO went outside and immediately called his director of operations and read him the riot act about what was going on, what's wrong, and why it needed to be fixed. I'm not happy. What's wrong? Do you realize they they just got robbed? They just just I I I was just in this store. Yeah, I, had no idea I watched it. I, I wasn't even I wasn't even in the store for over an hour, and there was already a thief. Some might have seen this as an overreaction, but imagine if this was not just your store, but your family's legacy. Would you want it to be known as the place where workers get pepper sprayed and your products get stolen every day? We didn't think so. Number 4. Diamond Resorts Next up is Steven Klubeck, CEO of Diamond Resorts, who went undercover to check on the training status of one of their locations that should have had a successful transition. At the front desk when talking with Stephanie, another employee, he made a worrisome discovery. This could potentially put the company at risk but can be fixed with proper training. This is where we keep the filing for all of our guests here in the hotel. There are credit cards that we hold. And we need the, their credit card numbers to make the authorization. The laws say that you can't keep credit card numbers. Well, I'm, I'm not aware or informed of that, but... Not long after, a customer approaches about an issue with her bill. Specifically, the customer got a card with them that would give them discounts for their stay or things they purchased within the resort. However, as she notes to the boss, she bought a lot of items that didn't get the discount at all. This was because the employees didn't present the card ahead of time, and that ticked the boss off beyond belief since that contradicted the entire purpose of the card. I was just about to go over my bill. I thought that you might be interested in some of the discrepancies we come across. Yeah. First of all, there's a card that gives you 10% off discounts, and there's all these items that were not discounted because they didn't present the card ahead of time. He couldn't take a guest being mistreated like that anymore, knowing he had the power to make things right. So he blew his cover right there on the spot, 
and started to fix all the issues she had with her bill. With them right now, we try to go through it and hopefully... No, you're not. You know you're not. You're going to sit with me. I own this place. I'm Stephen J. Klubeck. I own Diamond Resorts. I'm not happy. I'm really not happy about this. No. When the boss asks his employees how this could happen, they say that's the policy. And you could see his eyes almost shoot out of his head. And then he demands the cards so that he can view it himself. I just how can we make this mistake? It's uh, because of the policy side. What policy? On the card. Give me the card. This is insane. I apologize. Apologies. Not my style. Customers' trust is essential in running a business. So giving your customers a discount card that doesn't work and charging them more money for no reason? Yeah, that's something to get mad about. Number three, waiting, loading. Now let's talk about computers. If you're a company that relies on computers for anything, the last thing you want or need is your computer to fail to load or get busy with the internet signal. So now imagine that you run a multi-million dollar company that specializes in helping people with real estate and with investing. And the programs you're supposed to work with don't function. That's what happened with Armando Montelongo when he went undercover. He went to the call center where the problem wasn't the employee. He had a nice one in Amanda, but instead it was the program itself that blew his mind. Go ahead and just hit recover web page. Sometimes with so many systems being going in here with the same program, it tends to just hiccup sometimes. When he asked how many times this happens, Amanda noted that if we're lucky, it'd be only twice a day. It's not an issue that we can resolve in here. It is an IT issue. How often does this happen? If we're really in here pumping, it'll happen maybe twice or so a day. <laughs> this showed that his company wasn't running 100%, and as the camera perfectly showed, some of the fat cats in charge of everything weren't doing anything about it. That included not coming to the CEO himself to help fix the problem. The thing that's shocking me and frankly really, really upsetting me is no one's doing anything about this. What the hell? I can't wait anymore. This problem has to be fixed now. He vents loudly on camera and promises to fix the problem right then and there because in his own words, his company was losing money and he wouldn't stand for that. Do you guys know who I am? And do you guys realize that I've been here undercover? I'm doing an episode of Undercover Boss. The reason why I'm doing this is to get to know my business better. A random glitch on a computer, that's something that can happen to anyone at any time. But when it comes to a consistent issue across a line of computers, that needs to be fixed ASAP. And he was right to be mad that it wasn't fixed before he got there. Number 2. The Ruler Next up, we head to Buffalo Wings and Rings, where the CEO, Nadir Maceda, found out that one of the franchise owners had a kitchen manager ruling over their people with an iron fist. Grab the bourbon sauce. Bourbon barbecue? Yeah, let me see that wrist action. You look like a pretty lonely guy. You, you probably should have some pretty good wrist action. Yep, let's go, get in there. And while that can get things done, he was getting results at the cost of basically abusing his fellow employees through fear tactics. Okay. Every time you drop an order and you're done, yeah. do what you could never do on prom night. Tap it twice. I got a feeling you've probably been a guy that's been walked on a time or two in his life. Nobody walks on The CEO waited until the end of the episode to call out the man by not just revealing who he was, but bringing in the franchise owner and a fellow co-worker to set things straight. This led to the CEO giving the franchise owner the opportunity to decide what to do with the kitchen manager. But the franchise owner asked for the manager to be separated from them, and the man couldn't believe it. I think I would have a better chance at success if we separate ways. Okay, so I'm um, gone then. He was so furious and in such disbelief that he denied to the CEO's face that he did anything wrong. I am who I am. Sorry, I'm such a scary monster. Thank you, Sean, for making a wise decision. Some people truly live in their own world. Number one, dishes for days. Finally, we have the CEO of Buffet Inc., Anthony Wido, who goes undercover as Mike to see just how messy his workplace is. While the restaurant from the outside looks fine and the customers are happy, on the inside, the kitchen is loaded with dishes that are just stacked everywhere. If not obvious, that's a bad thing. Then when he's asked to wash the dishes by a disgruntled employee, he's told to run two stations by himself. 
only after one minute of training. There's nothing like getting thrown to the wolves your first day on the job. Not the best business practice. You're gonna do that, and I'm gonna do this in the front. You're gonna do this, so how are we gonna do this? Right now, you're gonna run both positions. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> Sometimes. It never happens, man. Oh, yes, it does. It's because your manager's not doing a good job. The employee who was training the CEO basically left it up to him to figure it out. And worst of all, he was being a smart aleck with his answers to any question the CEO had. I'm working with Scott, and I think he's a smart aleck, and I don't think it's necessary. Condescending. He, he didn't really help me. No, the reds don't. It doesn't matter whether it's reds or clear. Right? Sure. He just said, hey, go figure it out. The CEO was so furious that he went to the manager and told him the truth about who he was. I'm not Mike Davis. My name's Anthony Guido. I'm the president and CEO of Buffet Zinc. Wow. Yeah. When he did, the manager admitted that he had two people above him in the chain of command, and they did nothing to help him. Why aren't we training people? That's the thing. We have two other managers above me. So I try to well, do what, what I can do. What is going on with the management team? What is going on with the management team is I don't know if they burnt out or what's going on with them. It's just like they don't have compassion for it. Thankfully, the CEO was determined to fix things so that the mountain of dishes and the employee's bad attitude never happen again. And there you have it, everyone. A look at the times when undercover bosses had their emotions get the best of them. Which blow-up stunned you the most? Let us know in the comments down below, and we'll see you next time.